right, here at the Coliseum, how do we get from here to the Trevi Fountain? On today's video, I wanna share with you two wonderful walks that you can take from the Coliseum to the Trevi Fountain. Each walk takes around a half an hour without stops. One of these walks is a little bit more obvious and the other is a bit more esoteric. As with all of my walking itineraries, of course you can find your way using Google Maps or another map program. The whole point of my sharing these walks with you is that I like to share my favorite spots along the way. These can be cultural spots, places to eat and drink, or even to shop. All right, don't forget to hit that like button and please consider subscribing. In the description below, you'll find chapters that list some of the stops on this walk. So if you wanna jump ahead, you can go ahead and do so. And of course it goes without saying that either of these walks could be done in the opposite direction. All right, without further ado, let's get started on walk number one. All right, if this was a weekend, the Via dei Fori Imperiali would be oh gosh, closed to anything? most traffic and we could walk down the middle. But during the week, you need to walk on the sidewalk. All right, right here behind me is a tourist information point. This is a good place to stop if you need a quick break. They have bathrooms, you need to pay to use them, but they're clean. You can grab something to eat or drink. There are places to sit down. So if you need a quick stop, perhaps especially in summer when it's really hot, this is a good place for that stop. However, just across the street from me is one of my favorite places to stop along this route. And it is one of my favorite secret spots in Rome. So let's go check it out. You guys, the Basilica of Santi Cosma at Damiano is one of the most beautiful churches in Rome. And I think it's very little known and very undervisited. You might know this church a little bit better by its original shape, which is located inside of the Roman Forum, and it's known as the Temple of Romulus. The Temple of Romulus inside of the Roman Forum is not named for one of the founders of Rome. It's actually named for the young son of Emperor Maxentius named Romulus, who had died at a young age and had been deified. You can sometimes visit the Temple of Romulus, it's not always open, and even when it is, it is sometimes considered one of the super sites, unless there is an exhibit, in which case it's open to everyone. Santi Cosma Damiano were two Greek doctors who were martyred, and this is one of the many churches named for them. For example, there's a church in Trastevere called San Cosimato, which is named for them. As we walk in, we're gonna see this very beautiful cloister with a fountain in the middle. Many people don't realize that off to the right, there is a huge nativity scene that is open year round. Intricate nativity scenes like this are common in Italy, although to this scale, they're not as common. Usually these types of nativity scenes are of Neapolitan origin, meaning from Naples. Once we're inside the church, there are a few interesting things to see as well. If you go to the back and turn around, you can look down and see inside of the Temple of Romulus. The church is very simple in its design. It is a central nave. This was part of the Counter-Reformation. The apse is made of stunning mosaics from the sixth and seventh centuries. All right, let's keep walking down the Via dei Fori Imperiali, which means the road of the imperial fora or forums. As we start walking down the Via dei Fori Imperiali, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, you can see right into the Roman Forum. Now, while I highly recommend that you visit the Roman Forum, in case you don't, you can see it really well from right here. Don't forget to check out my video all about Julius Caesar in Rome. Well, now that we've seen this side with Julius Caesar's Forum and the Roman Forum, I'm gonna cross over to the other side where we can see the other three imperial fora. So at this point, we can stay here on the Via dei Fori Imperiali, or we can just cross over and be a little bit closer to the forums of Nerva, Augustus, and Trajan. Now, depending on how much time and energy you have, you could spend a little bit of time here at these imperial fora and just sort of poke around on the edges and look down into them and get a little bit more of a sense of them. And if you really have time and energy, and if you want to, you can visit the Complesso Vittoriano, which is behind me. That is known as the wedding cake, but it's actually an important monument. If you wanna know more about this monument, I have a page all about it on the RomeWise website. 
I think everybody's favorite thing about that monument is being able to take the elevator to the top and get those amazing 360 degree views of Rome that you cannot get anywhere else. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna keep this walk as straight as possible, so let's keep going. So we're standing here in front of Trajan's Forum, which was the Forum of Emperor Trajan. Pretty obviously, one of the first things to note is the Column of Trajan. The column tells the story of Emperor Trajan's conquest of Dasha, which is today Romania. Now you cannot go inside of the Column of Trajan, but you can go inside of Trajan's Forum. Believe it or not, it's actually part of your Roman Forum ticket. So most people don't really come over here, but if you leave the Roman Forum and you come past Julius Caesar's Curia and past Caesar's Forum, you actually walk underneath the Via dei Fori Imperiali and you can be here in this archeological area. You could even enter from here and go the opposite direction. Now, depending on the time of year and the time of day, behind me is a wonderful rooftop bar. It's pretty posh and it's actually become very difficult to get into lately, but I do recommend it if it's the right time of year and day for you and if you can get in. All right, let's keep making our way to the Trevi Fountain. We are about halfway there. So right here at the base of the Column of Trajan, it's a little place to sit down if you want to. And right in front of me are two interesting spots if you want to stop and check them out. One of these spots is the Terre e Domus, which is a cafe. It has been open, closed, open and closed again. It is currently open. And I've always loved this cafe, not for the food, but for the location. So it's a perfect spot right between the Colosseum and the Trevi Fountain. It is also a great place to sit down and have a nice view out onto this beautiful forum. And just next to the cafe is the Domus Romana at Palazzo Valentini. The Domus Romana at Palazzo Valentini is an amazing archaeological site that you can visit. Usually you have to plan for this ahead, but if you just happen to be here and you're walking by and you want to try to get in, you can try on the spot. But I do recommend booking this in advance. It's a really fantastic underground site and a great way to understand the art and architecture of ancient Rome. Just a warning, it can be a little bit disorienting because there are some flashing lights and I found myself sort of reaching out and holding on to the sides. Also, underneath you, it's plexiglass so you can see below you, so that can be disorienting too, but I still think it is an amazing site to visit in Rome. Okay, we're here at the Basilica of Santi Apostoli, which is a stunning church, and I really recommend you pop in if it's open when you pass by. If you look at a map, you will see that there are several different paths we could have taken to get to the Trevi Fountain. I took you on this one because I wanted to show you a couple of things on this street. Behind me is the Antica Birreria Peroni. You may have heard of Peroni beer, and this is an Antica, meaning old, uh, brewery, and it's from 1906. So while this is not going to be where you're going to stop for some Cucina Romana, it is a great place to stop for a beer and some snacks, and it is very historic for this area. And just after this birreria, there is another secret spot that I want to show you. So this little church called the Cappella di Madonna del Archetto is the smallest church in Rome. As you can see behind me, the church has very limited opening hours, but if you happen to be here at 6 p.m., you can go inside. If you walk by this church and it happens to be open, don't miss going inside. It has just a stunning fresco cycle that is a must-see, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
Galeria Shara, just behind me, is another beautiful place to walk through. It's just an office building, but it is painted in this Art Nouveau style, and it's just really, really beautiful. And I find many people don't really know about it, so it is one of those secret spots. We're now passing Baccano, another one of my suggestions for where to eat near the Trevi Fountain. All right, guys, it is time for walk number two of how to go from the Colosseum to the Trevi Fountain. This walk may seem a little bit out of the way to you. It also may seem a little bit esoteric. There are lots of fun little secret spots that I want to share with you. This is a great walk for those of you who have visited Rome before or who just want to do something a little bit off the beaten path. All right, without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, once we climb those stairs as a bonus, this is one of the best spots where you can get a great shot of the Colosseum. But we're gonna cross that bridge right there. And here is another place where you can get some great shots of the Colosseum, right from this bridge. Many people don't know about this little spot because it was fairly scruffy <laughs> for a long time and they recently restored it and now it's really beautiful and it's another great place where you can get some wonderful shots of the Colosseum. And yes, we are on our way to the Trevi Fountain, so let's keep going. You'll have noticed that we passed quite a few places to eat and drink on this little street leading up to here. Honestly, none of them are that great, but I do have some places to suggest to you further along on this walk, so let's keep going. Here at this corner, we are right next to a branch of the Sapienza University. Now we are at the first real stop of this walk and the main reason that I wanted to take you on this route. So this is the church of San Pietro in Vincoli, which means St. Peter in Chains. As the name describes, the church has the chains that once held St. Peter. Legend has it that it's actually two sets of chains, the ones that held St. Peter in Jerusalem and the ones that held St. Peter in Rome. And supposedly when they came together, they merged to become one chain. For me personally, the main reason to visit this church is to see Michelangelo's sculpture of Moses. This is one of my favorite pieces of art by Michelangelo, and I think it alone is worth making a detour to come visit this church. The statue was originally meant to adorn the tomb of Pope Julius II, the Pope who famously harangued Michelangelo into painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Supposedly, when Michelangelo finished sculpting Moses, he tapped the knee of his sculpture with his hammer and said, speak, because apparently it was just so lifelike. I hope you enjoyed that visit to St. Peter in Chains. Let's continue on our walk to the Trevi Fountain. So we are now in the heart of the Monti neighborhood, and this is a great neighborhood to explore. There are a lot of vintage shops here, some antique shops, cute little boutiques. It is not a major shopping destination such as by the Spanish Steps, but it's full of those cute little boutiques for those of you who like to do that kind of shopping. Here in Piazza Madonna dei Monti, there are some little cafes. Again, not a great place to eat, but it's got a lot of atmosphere, and it is a famous local hangout. The two main streets you can walk up to get to our next destination are Via dei Serpenti and Via del Boschetto. We're gonna go up Via del Boschetto. So these streets that I'm standing on and this neighborhood in general is a great place to stop for something to eat or drink. Nearby you have one of the best gelaterias in Rome, Fata Morgana. 
On Via Urbana, you'll find Broccoletti, a great place for Roman food. Also on Via Urbana, there's a nice little Wi-Fi cafe. On Via dei Serpenti is arguably the best place for sushi in Rome, Hasekura. And you can find all of my best suggestions on the website on my page about where to eat near the Colosseum. Some of you may remember this park from my video about secret gardens in Rome. I just love this little spot. It's very quiet. It does feel like a secret. I feel like there's almost never anybody here. And it offers us some quiet space, but also some beautiful views. Let's go check it out. At this point, we've reached the Quirinal Palace, or Quirinale. The Quirinale is, in fact, one of the seven hills of Rome. Some say it is the highest of the seven hills. It's sort of tied with the Esquilino. I'm standing next to the Scuderie, which were once the stables. Today, it's an exhibition space, and there are often really good exhibits here. If you're lucky, you might arrive here at this piazza in time to see the changing of the guard, which is a really lovely ceremony to watch. The Quirinal Palace is among the largest in the world. It was built in the Renaissance for the popes who were, at that time, considered royalty, the rulers of Rome. When Italy became a monarchy, this became the residence of the royal family. Today, it is the residence of the President of Italy. If you happen to come here at sunset, you will get some amazing views just that way. I'm going to show you what the view is right now, but at sunset, it is even more special. Now, believe it or not, we are just minutes from the Trevi Fountain, so let's finish this walk. So just behind me is the Città dell'Acqua, or the Vicus Caprarius, which was the name of a street in ancient Rome. And here is where you can see some of the water that feeds the Trevi Fountain. I think it's a really amazing visit, and it's almost never crowded, and it also doesn't cost very much. So this is a great stop if you want to do something unusual on your way to visit the Trevi Fountain, which is just around the corner. Also, don't miss my web pages all about things to do near the Trevi Fountain, and also about things to see underground in Rome. All right, the Trevi Fountain is around the corner. This will be the end of our walk. This walk took about half an hour without stops, similar to the other walk. It just has such a different feel to it. So what did you guys think? Did you enjoy these two walks? Did you know about them? I hope I've shared with you some different and unusual things to see and do along the way. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed these walks. Drop me a line in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. And for more all about the Chubby Fountain, don't miss one of my most popular videos on the channel right here.